This is a HeadGum Podcast. Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine, with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit takecareof.com the promo code is date me what a treat you'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time bye bye you date me a podcast where i try to figure out why i'm single even though i'll let you titty fuck me even though i don't enjoy it my guest today is a model she's beautiful she's wonderful i met her on the steve harvey show she's modeled for h&m she's done runway stuff she's got a book called the not so subtle art of being a fat girl loving the skin and you're in tess holiday boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I can't even follow that. There was, I'm just sitting over here like I need more caffeine. I'm mind blown. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Truly, this is like my base level. <laughs> I can't get wild. <laughs> Thanks uh, for having me. I'm really excited. It's uh, good to see you under less stressful circumstances. Yes. We first met on the Steve Harvey show. Uh, it was called the Curvy Hour, mm. and the only reason why I said yes to it is because the way it was pitched to me, they were like, okay, so Steve is doing a Curvy Hour, and it's going to be you and a curvy panel, and then an audience of curvy women. And I was like, there's going to be an audience of fat women? They're just going to go out and find fat women? How did they <laughs> ask that? What was the breakdown for it? Like, I'm so sorry you can't come today. It's for the fat women. And I was like, that is so funny. So I was like, I have to do this. That's the only reason why I did it. Because I was like, I can't wait to see a sea of fat ladies who are just like, Steve. Um, You know, I wish it would have been a little bit more positive than it was. Mm-hmm. But uh, I definitely think that uh, you were literally only the highlight of, of my <laughs> trip and the pizza. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, I guess that was the good part of it. Yeah, yeah. they got us Lum- Luminati's pizza, yes. which is Chicago style deep dish. Ooh, baby, if you're in Chicago, so you better taste bomb. it. So good. Uh, yeah, it was interesting because um, because I've done the curvy panel twice now because I was like, I have to go back. That was wild. Uh, but girl, I didn't get a call back. <laughs> Not after him had the side eye he gave me was edited out, but <laughs> I was not asked. Back. Well, I think it's because like men don't really love being told 
you're wrong. No. And he had a little bit of like antiquated views on body positivity. And you were like the forefront of body positivity, which I love. You have a hashtag F your beauty standards and people accuse you of promoting obesity, which is like the most insane thing in the world. Mm. Because what does that mean? I feel like you promote, you have a body, you're in it, love it. A hundred percent. I even wrote in my book. Uh, so in my book, I have like Tess Holiday's advice for life. Mm -hmm. And one of them is saying that I promote obesity is like saying that Stevie Wonder promotes blindness. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, it's who I am. Like, why is that? Why is the fact that I'm saying love yourself and it's coming from a fat body? Why does that equal that I'm like recruiting people like Tupperware to like become <laughs> fat? You know, I'm just saying like, love yeah. yourself. It's God, it's so basic, but people just make it in to you know it's just blanketed by their own shit so mm -hmm. it's really hard but um we have people like you to break it down i'm trying appreciate it it took me a <laughs> long time to get to loving the body i was in like i uh my parents passed away and i had all their stuff in storage and i had some of my stuff from new york in storage and i was recently in jersey where the unit is and i was going through old pictures and there's a literal picture of me in a pool fully clothed also Aww. i'm like 75 pounds lighter than i am now and i was like oh i wish i could go back in time and be like bitch you gonna get bigger just take it all <laughs> Off, get in the pool live your fucking life oh that's so real i look back at photos of it's it's like um god this is so white of me but it's the song where it's everybody's free to wear sunscreen it's mm -hmm. by Boz Lerman. so he says uh you'll look back at photos of yourself and realize you weren't as fat as you imagined mm -hmm. but when i was a teenager i hated myself and i was like i wish that i could have been like 160 pounds ago been like your life is good. Mm -hmm. You can love yourself now, which is why we do what we do now, which is why we're like, love yourself. Because if you can love the body you're in, it might not take you gaining 160 pounds uh -huh. like me to love to love your body. So, oh, goodness gracious. But it's okay. There's just more to love now. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bit more. You got to hide things in my rolls, oh. whatever. Uh, when I was younger, when I first started having sex, I would always have sex in the dark. I would always have a t-shirt on. It was truly like having sex through like a fucking hole in a sheet. I was like, don't touch me. Um, don't touch my body. Just fuck it. Just fuck my, fuck the hole. And that is such an insane thing to think yeah. now. Now I'm like lights on. I don't fucking care. You're going to see all of this. I'm going to shake it. I don't fucking care. My husband was the first person that I had sex with with the lights on. Really? In, in all of the people that I am like all the people that I slept with. He was the first one that I had the lights off and he got up and he turned the lights on and he's like no it's like i want to see you i'm like that's weird why why mm -hmm. do you want to see me and now i can't imagine like going back to that you know mm -hmm. it's i missed out on i mean we have good sex now but i just think like <laughs> all that sex yeah. i missed out on in the beginning <laughs> yeah it's crazy it's so insane to think i have like a joke about uh how you're not thinner in the dark so it literally doesn't make sense to turn out the lights because it's truly not like a guy's gonna touch you and be like oh I'm so glad I'm fucking a tiny part. You know, he knows you're a big bitch. He likes it. That's why yes. he's there. Yeah. And it, my mother used to say that. She was like, if a, if a boy likes you, he's going to like you and all of you. You know, men are, they're visual monsters. They like they what they see. If they're going to fuck you, they like what you got. 100%. So you've been with Nick for six years. I have, yeah. And you guys did not meet on a dating app. You guys no. met on Tumblr. We met on Tumblr. He saw photos of me um, and he thought that I was cute and he liked that I what I was doing. Uh, and he messaged me and he said, I love how you inspire other women. Oh. And um, I was really, I had just gotten out of a relationship that, um, I mean, we're still friends, but it just wasn't the best fit for mm -hmm. us. But so I was like thirsty and I saw <laughs> I saw his photo and he's I thought he's very pretty. Thank you. He's just a pretty man. Very, I, <laughs> very pretty. Our baby looks just like him. It's such a pretty baby. Um but yeah, I saw a photo of him and I was like, there's no way because I was still working through my own insecurities mm -hmm. and like I was still trying to figure out who I was and and I hadn't quite loved my body um, at that point. And so when I saw his photo, I was like, there's no way that this hot dude is messaging me. <laughs> and look, his message was, I love how you inspire other women. Mm -hmm. And I literally messaged him back and I said, thank you. By the way, my jaw hit the floor when I saw you because you're hot. Like, 
it wasn't I didn't hold back at all which is so like I would do that now if I was single but then it was mm -hmm. so just like out of character so um yeah very thirsty I like that you saw him and you were like I just gotta fucking tell him that he's cute because <laughs> he is cute because I remember I I think you were modeling for Domino's Dollhouse, yeah. which I don't think is a company anymore. No. It was a plus size company. Yeah. And that was the first time I saw you and I was like, damn, <laughs> wow. This woman is a, she's a, can I say fat? Does yeah, yeah. You? Well, okay. fat's in my book title, so oh, please. Okay. Well, sometimes fat. you say it and like people's faces change and I'm like, I was, oh, you don't know? I was literally in the doctor yesterday with, with Nick and the receptionist was like, oh, you look, you look really familiar. And I said, thanks. And she was she was plus size. She was fat. Mm -hmm. And I said something about being fat. And she goes, oh, no, no, girl, we're fluffy. No, no, no. And I said, and, and I, I said yeah, you can be fluffy, but I'm fat. I'm fluffy. I'm a lot of stuff. So it's it's funny, like, the, the face that people make when mm -hmm. I call myself fat. Like, it's just, yes. it's complete shock. Yeah, I have a joke about that because when I call myself fat, because uh, I, I started working on fat material maybe like a year and a half ago and every time I would start I couldn't figure out how to get into it because I would say I'm fat and then without fail someone in the audience would go oh uh, and I'd be like don't do I that know. I don't feel bad for myself I literally said it with a smile and I'm wearing a crop top like do you think yeah. I'm sad I, I would be wearing a little parka I would overdress <laughs> I'm literally right now you can't see it because it's a podcast but I'm wearing a lace see-through dress with titties out because I don't fucking care she is I love it and I used to cover my arms which is an insane thing I was like I guess if there's a sleeve they won't know well I was that way too I when I moved to LA I would literally wear cardigans every mm -hmm. single day because I was so ashamed of my arms and you have big arms like me yes girl we've got big yes, arms yes girl and when like it's so it was so hard for me to break through that but really I was fucking hot like mm -hmm. tired of melting and yes. so I stopped leaving the cardigans and I literally don't own any cardigans at all it's now it's life changing it when really you is. finally embrace your body I got to a point where I was like wait if I'm wearing a cardigan and I'm wearing, you know, like head to toe, I'm covered. I think they can still see me. I'm, you just become like grimace. Like you're just yeah. a shape. You're like a shape that's fully covered. Yeah. Um, had you ever like messaged a dude online? Men message you all the time. Yes. Yeah. I get a ton of messages now. Prior to that, I did online dating uh, because I was I was a single mom and I didn't go to bars. I had no mm -hmm. way of meeting guys. So I was on... Well, I tried eHarmony, but let me tell you, girl, uh, the religious aspect was <laughs> difficult. Mm -hmm. But also at the time I was 20, I was 23, 24, and it kept matching me with like 26 year old ministers or oh. people in the, in the mm -hmm. uh, army. And they just like weren't really my type. You yes. know what I mean? Like there was a lot of fat phobia coming and I just, yes. it was difficult. So I kept trying to raise my age because I wanted an older man. Mm -hmm. And look, long story short, eHarmony didn't work. I tried OkCupid, okay which is how Oof. I met my last boyfriend mm -hmm. be before Nick. Um, which he was good, but we're just, we weren't compatible, but it was hard because I, um, I have a smaller face. Mm -hmm. And so it's the thing where people are like, uh, I'm fatter in real life. Mm -hmm. So I would have to, I would meet up with people. I would have photos of myself that were, you know, full, full bodied. And, uh, guys would be like, wow, you're fatter than I thought you were. Good and I'd be Lord. like, dope. <laughs> well, I guess I'm not going to see you again. Ugh. So that's where we'd usually, I would message these guys. I would meet up and then they would, they would dump me. And keep in mind, one of the guys I talk about it in my book, um, picked me up and had to breathe into his breathalyzer <laughs> to start the truck <laughs> ah! from, from his first DUI oh. offense, he said. What a treat. <laughs> what a treat of a person to be like, I'm fucked up, but you're fatness. That's, I know. Uh, that's, that's I know. bad. That's a real deal breaker. So yeah, he never saw me again, and I thought I'm not the fucked up one in this no. <laughs> in this part. I mean, to me, fat's not an insult, but someone going, "Ah, oh, you're fatter than than I thought," is the same thing as like, "Oh, you're uglier than I thought," or like, I don't know why people need to say everything they're thinking out loud. I was on eHarmony for never, so I 
answered the entire questionnaire, which was weird. Because it was they would so weird. Because they would re-ask you the same question, just in, like, different iterations. Uh-huh. And then they rejected me. Oh, girl. They said I was part of the 2% of unmatchable people. <laughs> and this is, like, back in the day where, like, I, didn't, I couldn't screenshot anything because I had a fucking Dell computer. Oh. But, like, I got that, and I was like, oh, my God. God. And I showed it to my roommate at the time and she just laughed and laughed. And that's like stuck with me. I, I have not been Maybe able to find to, anybody. You need to write a book and the title needs to be unmatchable. <laughs> I'm saying it now because that's so funny. Speak it into existence. I am un- and I know that like the more I talk about it, the more I'm like, oh, okay, I am a tough sell. I'm fat, I'm black. I work a lot. I have long hours. I travel a lot. I have my own money. I don't need anybody, like, financially. That's kind of a hard sell. A lot of dudes want to take care of you. It's funny that you say that because uh, three of my good friends that happen to be in the same category as everything that you're Mm -hmm. saying, I always think, why are they single? Like, my friend Ivory, fat, black, stylish, has her own money, social worker, Mm -hmm. travels, takes solo vacations all the time, still single. And I'm like, how is this possible? Because I'd like to me, I'm like, if I was a lesbian and single, Mm -hmm. I would scoop you up in two seconds. And it doesn't, I think obviously men are intimidated by, by strong women. And I think the fatness, you know, I think there's still in our society, even though it's been shown that men uh, in America are more sexually attracted in favor bigger women. I think really? it's like 54%. Yeah, there was like, there's a ton of surveys huh. and stuff that have been done where men are, and, and the porn searches, the porn searches in America are all like, plus, huh. like it's like the higher favored and plus size. So I think it's because people are ashamed and embarrassed to admit mm-hmm. that they're you know, sexually attracted to plus size women. Do you remember, it wasn't super long ago, but a man made an Instagram post where he was like, I love my curvy wife. But you saw that I got in a fight with him. No! Girl, I went viral getting in a fight with that no, fool. No, I missed that. Yeah, what I did. I didn't mean did to say? cut you off. No, no, please tell me. Um, I basically said that why are we why are we giving trophies to mediocre white men <laughs> on doing stuff that they should already be doing? Like, because the thing is, and people were like, that's not fair because your husband is, you know, a skinny white guy <laughs> saying he loves, you know, he posts photos saying he loves you. And I go, yeah, but it was the language and the way that he Mm -hmm. did it that wasn't appropriate and like and to be honest both of them were mad at me like the and then they were on the news about it and literally everyone was asking me why would you do that and they and they were like god you know you're such a bully test for doing that and i and i it really made me upset and i and i realized obviously i have more work to do if Mm -hmm. women are just so easily fawning over a dude (laughs) saying all that stuff about his wife it's like Of course you love her and you're attracted to her. You married her. Mm -hmm. And like all of the comparisons he was doing about her body and how she'll never be on the – a body like hers will never be on the cover of magazines, but I still love her. And I was like, bitch, bodies like hers have been on the covers Mm -hmm. of magazines, me, and like at least 15 other people I can name. She wasn't – big no i mean she was like average i she, thought yeah i mean she falls into the spectrum of plus size but it's not like he's dating you know like i just thought that it was i mean for it, god it, it grosses me out it was just so self-congratulatory mm-hmm. oh and it, absolutely and he wanted a pat on the back and mm-hmm. a trophy and it just it bothered me and and people can think i mean or a bully or whatever but i feel like it's my if i'm going into that realm of body positivity and loving yourself and talking about like healthy relationships and all like all of the stuff i use my platform for i have to call out stuff like that and i didn't do it in a mean way i just think that it's important that we say like hey like this is not something that you you want in a partner that's going to to do stuff like this you can have someone that dotes on you and like thinks you're bomb but like not like that mhm i, I would be so embarrassed yeah if my partner made a public post about how awful <laughs> other people thought my body was, but he just loves it so much he don't know why. Oh. I would be like, can you not ever do that again? Oh. I don't even know what that conversation would be. I'd be like, you gotta go. I know. It's a, it's a strange, it's like, 
it also goes back to to plus size women taking crumbs you know like mm -hmm. we just i mean look i i love cookies and crumbs i'll take them all but i'm <laughs> saying like when it comes to people loving yourself and your body and, and what and images you're seeing in media and all of this like we just have to stop taking like crumbs like mm -hmm. that i don't know it to me it, it rubbed me the wrong way obviously and and i'm very vocal about stuff like that i and like that you're very vocal i like that you Cause you like very much like interact with your fans and you yeah. are constantly like posting things. I don't like, you're just very good at social media. <laughs> okay. Well, I can teach you. I love, you know, I love social media because I wouldn't be sitting here. I mean with you, cause I wouldn't have my career. I wouldn't. How did you, I'm sure you get asked this all the time, hmm. but I know you started your career on a modeling website. Yes. Well, yeah, I had photos of myself on model mayhem, mm -hmm. which was basically, and I think still, is now used for guys to pick up girls uh, and like just skeezy guys that say they're photographers oh, that live yes, in their mom's like, like yes come to my fucking know. hut and i'll yes. fucking shoot you and you're like yeah. oh, no thank you yeah and i need you topless mm -hmm. on my dirty bed please mm -hmm. these photos are going to change your life <laughs> i shot it i shot at this guy's house off of the 405 freeway mm -hmm. okay i go in and i thought like i had all it was before i started professionally modeling but you know i'm trying to be a model i'm out here hustling mm -hmm. in la i go into this house and his mom answers the door oh no she's watching tv and he's like oh yeah upstairs so i go upstairs his mom doesn't even bat an eyelash oh and the no. guy's like i need you to take off your shirt and like you can be topless but you can leave this on and like i did it and i was like covered <sighs> but i felt really weird his bed yeah. was dirty there was like empty like top ramen containers <gasps> everywhere and anyways long story <sighs> short like he's still out there i saw one of his photos the other day <sighs> the Gross. saddest thing is you're not the only person with no. that story uh, being a woman trying to break it in truly any form of entertainment, people just want to take advantage of you because you're naive and you yeah. don't know that it's not right to go to a man's house and go to his room and take your <laughs> like it's you don't no. know that yeah. because you're like, well, I don't know. How does anyone start? Mm -hmm. How do I, I've like met with dudes who are like, oh, I can do X, Y, and Z for you, and I get there and I'm like, oh, this is fucking shady. A hundred percent. One guy. Uh, I met him on the street. He was like, you're beautiful. Have you ever thought about modeling? And I was like, I'm too fat to model. He's like, no, this is specifically for model or bigger models. And I was like, oh, okay. And he hands me this card that says bustybabydolls.com. Oh, and he's like, Lord. you don't have to go to the website to check anything out. We can just set up an appointment for you to do some modeling. And I was like, oh, okay. So I made the appointment and I was like on my way to go. And I was, something told me, I was like, look at the website. See what bustybabydolls.com is. <laughs> Girl, it was full on porn. Just like big black women getting fucking railed. And I was like, oh! And I was like, what would have happened when I got there? Uh, yeah. Would this man have like, he probably would have talked me into doing a porn and then it would have been something to haunt me for the rest of I, my life. I, might, I may or may not be sitting here right now. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, who knows? I could have been like fucking murdered or like whatever. Oh. Okay, yeah, it's we have to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll keep talking. And we're back. What a dream of a break. <laughs> okay, what were you talking about? Um, black women getting railed. This yes. was the last thing yes. that you said. The last thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm always saying something wild. <laughs> I'm so glad my publicist didn't come to this with me because she would be in the corner in the fetal position screaming. I at me. my publicist a lot of times I see her cringing and she'll be like, "Oh boy." But uh after like working with them for a while, they yeah. they're like, "That that's just that's her." That's my yes, mine does the same thing now. I'll get the eye roll or I'll get the mm -hmm. the mom like look and then, you know, <laughs> it's good. But um but yeah. Anyways. Okay, I want you to look at my Tinder page. Okay. And I want you to tell me what you think I can change if you just straight up like it. Uh, and then as you go through it, just like describe it because it's a podcast. Okay, but what I want to know is do you get recognized on Tinder? Like, do people, like, as a celeb? Um, P.S. I have this shirt and I will never part with it. It's I my love it. ASOS. Yeah, it's the ASOS monster. It looks like it's top. eating your boobs. Mm -hmm. So sorry. Do you get recognized on, on sometimes? Tinder? Sometimes I get recognized more times than more times I don't get recognized because my my demographic isn't like 20 year old, 30 year old men. It's a lot of teenage girls or like young ladies. Uh, but yeah. 
I, first of all, love this photo of you climbing the bookcase <laughs> because Thank I you. think that that's very, uh, that's very good. I also like that you, you say I got a fat ass. So if you're not into <laughs> it, bye. Mm-hmm. No, Let I, know. I love it. Down to figure skater. Fuck. <laughs> That's really funny. Thank you. I would be lost in this dating world. Like, I've never <laughs> used Tinder or, like, any kind of app no. because, well, it all started after You're I was right. in you a relationship. Completely. You've missed out. I have. Let me tell you something. It's awful. It's the fucking worst. I've heard nothing but horror stories, but especially, I mean, I've had a, a few friends that have ended up married from Tinder, but, uh, you know. I know that it's a hard world out there because mm -hmm. it's uh, – people are sketchy and, you know, I guess if you want something more than a hookup, which is cool too if that's all you want. I've been on Tinder I think for maybe two years, three years. I don't know. I don't know how long it's been around. But I've only had like three nice dates where like I went on another date Out of how person. many dates have you? So many. Oh, my God. So many dates. But also I went through a real hoe phase where I was like, yeah, I just need – to get deep dick. So I would just have dudes come <laughs> to my house. I'd be like, you fuck me, and then you leave. And then some guys like want to hang out. And I'm like, do you not get what a booty call is? Like, fucking leave. My friend, I don't want to, well, I'm just going to call her out, Ashley in New York. She's <laughs> she's like this tiny little thing. She uses it, and uh, she uses it just for recreational mm -hmm. purposes, just for sex, and loves it. But I do sometimes think like, you know, how hard it would be to find if you want like a committed it's monogamous relationship very, very hard yeah. and then i do have like a big old dildo in one picture so men... i missed that oh you do where is it it's in the monster picture girl I, didn't, I was so mesmerized by our matching t-shirt that i missed we probably have so many matching clothing because <laughs> probably do. there's no clothes for fat ladies no nothing cute what i've resorted to is um i buy uh, things that are smaller with a fuller skirt and then have someone cut the bottom off and add it to the the like uh, oh, body part. That's smart. <laughs> yeah, and then that way I have things that nobody else has. I love it. It's you got to You fat have lady, to be creative tips, as a like, fat lady. Tricks. Uh, I had some girl she was like, "Where do you shop?" and I was like, "Honestly, everywhere. Spandex is your friend and you have to put it on." Like, I was wearing a, a dress yesterday that was a medium, yeah. but it was like a giant trapeze dress. And I was like, oh, mm, yes, I'm here for this. <laughs> okay, so I, last night, was just cruising on Tinder, and I matched with this guy named Drew. Drew is, can you see Drew? I can. Drew has muscles. Drew's on the beach. Drew loves his body and his profile. He's 29. He says, let's work out together. Make meal plans, acro yoga, God, actor, director, cinematographer, And you guys matched? Yes. I'm I not trying to judge it. you, but my brain exploded. I matched. I, I swiped right because I was like, I have to see if we match. And then we did match. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to send him a message. So I wrote meal prep, yoga, and God, you fuck? <laughs> He hasn't responded. No. And then I matched with this guy named Zach a while ago, and he keeps, like, just messaging me intermittently. And then he he was like, let's get together sometime, December 14th. Then January 20th, he goes, what's your number? So I wrote eight. And he said, cool. <laughs> oh. I was like, I'm not giving you my phone number. I don't fucking know you. So, Everyone's But trash. do you feel you're not giving him your phone number, but do you feel you feel comfortable with them coming over to your house? Because, see, that would weird me out. Well, I figure if I meet someone in the bar and I bring them to my house, what's the difference if I bring true. someone from Tinder to my true, house? True, true. That's a good and point. Now I have a security system in my house. So, like, if you're going to break in, it'll yeah. alarm and ADT will come and yeah. save me. I yeah. don't know. Uh, but yeah, I guess it is. At first, when I was like, "Ooh, I'm just gonna fuck these dudes," I was like, "Is this gross? Is this bad?" But then I was like, <laughs> "I don't know." Like, I've slept with strangers from bars and never spoken to them again. Yeah, same. I get it. I feel like I. It's hard. I because I'm a mom, uh, and I'm not saying that judgy because it sounded judgy because I was like mom. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, my son, my older son's twelve, and my other son is almost two. Aww. And I so I kind of missed like a hoe phase that a lot of mm -hmm. my friends went because I was twenty with a kid. So Ooh, I. Yeah. 
didn't really like bring people to my house and do all of that until my son was old enough to like stay at his grandparents or mm-hmm. whatever. So, but I mean, I get it because when I was, when I was single and a teenager, I did so many mm-hmm. things that I'm surprised that I'm still alive <laughs> or I don't have like 20 STDs. So <laughs> yeah, I was very reckless in my younger days. I yeah, I it's wild that I'm pretty good right now. <laughs> um yeah, I just dating is so you're so you're very lucky you don't have to do it. But oh, have you do you know what Raya is? No. I'm like obsessed with Raya. What is it? Raya is like Tinder but for semi-famous people and Instagram <gasps> okay, models. Okay, I have heard of this. Uh, now that you said it, someone, one of my friends is on it and actually, oh, uh, well, okay, she hooks up with uh, some someone from a boy band or former boy band. <gasps> what a dream. And, <laughs> but like it's funny because I didn't believe her and I was like you have to text him. Because I want to see. And she texts him and he texts back with, who is this? <laughs> and she was like, she's like, well, he has like four different phones. And I was like, I get it. It's, it's fine. Like, whatever. That's so funny that it's, she's like, oh, yeah, I'll prove it to you. And he's like, who the fuck this? I was, and she's like, I was, he's got a lot of phones. I was crying. But uh, yeah, I, that's strange, too. And it's funny you said Instagram models because uh, that's a whole nother world of – Instagram's funny, you know. Instagram's very interesting. Social media, people are very crazy on it. They are. And I think people forget sometimes that you can just be whoever the fuck you want to be on Mm -hmm. social media and create whatever you want. That sometimes I think people are so focused on like everything being perfect online that they forget about actually working on themselves in real Mm -hmm. life, which I'm sure you notice through dating and all of that where you're like, you were much... (laughs) More appetizing on an app than in real life. Oh, yeah. I've been on dates with dudes where I'm like, ugh, your fingernails are long and gross, but you look pretty well groomed <laughs> online. I hate long fingernails. It's so funny it's that you so said that. gross. Because I'm like, okay, if you finger me, men are like not great with hygiene. Some of them aren't. And it's like, you probably have dirt under there. I don't want to have to get a tetanus <laughs> shot before you finger me, okay? Oh, my God. So... Gross. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell me about like DMs that you get? Because I'm, because you have like, how many followers do you have on Instagram? Like, I have one point, a girl, I don't have that many. You have but so thank many, you. Though. Bless you, Jesus. I have, <laughs> I have 1.5 million. That, to me, followers. that's 10 million. That's yeah. so many. <laughs> that so many. Um, I also lose a lot, you know, because I'm, I'm a big mouth, but I don't care. Bye. <laughs> um, I get a ton of DMs a day and, I would say it's it's half and half. Like half of it is just women saying that I, they're inspired by me or they want mm-hmm. it. Mostly they want modeling advice, which mm-hmm. is cool. I don't typically respond to them because of Google, you know. <laughs> um, and I mean, but if I see someone that genuinely like I feel like is going through something or or whatever, I will mm-hmm. reach out to them. Then I have a ton of men. I don't really get women sliding in mm-hmm. my DMs like in a sexual manner. <laughs> Mostly men. I I had to actually disable. I had my Snapchat open to where oh, anyone, so anyone could, could message mm-hmm. me because I like getting messages from my fans and I like Same. interacting interacting with them. But not when I open a video and someone's just jerking right off into yeah. it. And like also my husband and I like my husband's queer, which is a lot of fun because I can. What? OK, I'm not so up queer. On things. What does queer mean? So queer is that basically he's attracted to anyone and everyone regardless of like of they're like so he's re- attracted to he used to say that he was like pansexual or bi okay so they've changed it now so queer is just kind of like a blanket An encompassing of yeah everything. so he's okay. attracted to basically everyone okay. regardless of how they were assigned at birth and oh, okay. all kinds of stuff I was, oh okay yeah. I feel like that falls under bi. I don't know. I feel like sexuality is so yeah polarizing. Like people, it is it, because everyone. So you so could say with his labels. fluids, like his his fluid. is fluid. Mm-hmm. Um, which is funny because when I met him, I didn't. I guess I just like I I thought about it, but I kind of dismissed it as well because I not dismissed it. I kind of just put it in the back of my head because he liked me, I liked him, mm-hmm. and I didn't really care that he had been with men before or was attracted to. Mm-hmm 
whoever because it didn't bother me. My mom, it bothered uh, a lot. Yeah. I feel like older people are just like, <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. Why can't you pick? <laughs> but, I don't know why no. that's my old person voice, but <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Um, but I think it's hard for people to understand that my that my husband is queer and that we're in a monogamous married relationship because mm-hmm. they're like, well, if he's attracted to if he if he's attracted to men or whoever, then how can he be with you? And it's like, I, you know, for a long time considered myself heterosexual but i think that i'm my husband likes to joke that i'm straightish <laughs> because like i'm i'm obviously like i think that women are beautiful and i think that bo- basically anyone is beautiful and i can find attraction in anyone it doesn't necessarily mean that i could be in a relationship with them or mm-hmm. whatever but um you know i think that i think that we're all a little you know i agree gay-ish. i think everyone is just i think we need to like just not have labels anymore i agree and just be like i don't know i'm just gonna love who i love and yeah. like whatever because i was watching porn <laughs> like two nights ago and it was like a circle jerk on this woman and i was like what's gayer than that <laughs> like getting all your dicks out with your buddies and like jerking <laughs> off to the same girl like that to me that was pretty gay <laughs> and I, <laughs> like I mean I, truly at one point she yeah. had two dicks in her mouth and I was like so you're touching your friend's dick but like I'm sure it was like they look like those people who would just be like uh, no homo but we go fuck oh my her God, together we joke about that like, all the time like pretty gay it is and I think a lot of like we were talking about this too last night my husband and I like uh, there's the show that my son loves called Impractical Jokers mm-hmm. he's obsessed with it where they play practical mm-hmm. jokes on people so one of they they had to do a challenge where the guy had to get in a wrestling rink with a professional wrestler and I told my husband God wrestling is is so gay so, it's so gay. homoerotic so gay but the amount of people that watch wrestling and are in it would be like oh no no i'm not gay i'm not Wrestling's into that gay. and it's like football's 100%. pretty gay uh, <laughs> all of them all of the sports and well, not i mean like soccer soccer's kind of no no well i guess not. yeah you're doing a little footwork yeah, you're dancing yeah. around a field <laughs> but you know i just think like uh so yeah i mean uh i think through body positivity and learning how to love myself it made me um kind of like open my worldview i guess a bit on like people and realize that like we all have our own shit and it made it easier for me to love other people mm-hmm. like through loving myself which sounds really lame but it's true but it's very true because it's on rupaul says it if you can't love yourself how in the hell are you gonna love somebody else can, can i get, get an amen? amen it's so true because yeah. If you don't love you, then how are you bringing all of you to a relationship? A hundred percent. So I think that's where the sexuality and like all of that comes into play where where I was able to, uh, you know, kind of I, I never thought growing up in a Southern Baptist household. I mean, I'm not anymore, <laughs> but I'm saying like that I would be married to someone who I am and, and like have the viewpoints on the world I do. But, you know. My husband and I say it in regards to the DMs, like, why can't you wash it before you're sending a mm-hmm. photo of it? You know, or like clip your nails or do yes. a cute background. Yes. So we go through all the time and critique them where yes. I'm like, you know, I just like wish that people put more thought into them, <laughs> which is probably why I'm married to my husband, because his looked like 60s gay porn. And I was like, did, I'm marrying you right now. So did now. you guys send like naked pictures to yeah, each other? Yeah, we did. So. He's from Australia, right? He is. So how long were you dating online before you actually met? 10 months. Wow. Yeah. That's a fucking long time. It was. Well, I was supposed to go to Australia for work and mm-hmm. the job fell through and I called him devastated. This was in September of 2012. And he asked me, do you want to like date? Do you want to like be exclusive and Aww. date? And so I was now dating a person I had never met. I mm-hmm. already knew that I loved him. And so he came. He Wait, saved you, his- when did you know you loved him? pretty early on i think like we i mean we talked all the time and he was he was in a relationship when we met and it was towards the end of the relationship and he broke up with her and uh we started talking and there was just i mean i think probably like two or three months into talking that i knew that i loved him and i and i actually was thinking of like this is who I would want to marry. Aww. And it's weird because you've never even met the person. Mm-hmm. And I had all these feelings for someone. So 
when I told my mom he was coming to visit me and like stay in my home, mm -hmm. which see now I'm judging. I was like judging you <laughs> earlier. He came and stayed in my home with my with my he was my uh, older son was five at the time mm -hmm. uh, for six weeks. Everyone, That's a long time for an yeah, initial meeting. It was, and it did not go well. <laughs> really? No, we I talk about it in my book, and and because I felt like it was important to be honest with people that mm -hmm. I didn't know how to be loved. Loved. I had never had anyone okay. like want to see my body. I had never had anyone want to to be intimate with me. The like Nick is the first person that I have uh, had sex with more than two or three times, like the same partner. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know anything about that world. I mean, because most of my sexual encounters had been one night stands because mm -hmm. that's all that guys were giving yes, a fat girl i'm in the same know? boat currently yeah. i've i haven't there's there's one person in my life that i've had sex with more than three times mm. and, and it's, he's and bad it's, yeah <laughs> it's hard it's hard like how do you develop as a as a person and like even sexually if you're you know you're not given a chance so yeah it sucks. a thing uh, i'm working on right now in therapy is hugs like Aww. I, you gave me a very good hug. Well, that's different. Like hugs with a man that I'm okay. sleeping with, because to me, hugging and cuddling is more intimate than sex. Yeah. Like I used to get very drunk and like hook up with dudes and then be like, I don't cuddle. I don't do hugs. <laughs> you fuck me now. And my therapist was like, we have, we have to work on that. When I said that to her and, and uh, I've just been trying to be more open with people and trying to like really like when I hug someone like think of like how it makes me feel it makes yeah. me feel happy so like hugging a man I just slept with should in theory make me happy but then I was like have I ever slept with anyone I like I don't think so yeah no it's it's uh I can honestly say that, uh, which I feel like maybe I'm useless on your podcast. Cause You're not. The other podcast I did, the the other person had, uh, or the one I did last week, was newly single. So he was heartbroken. And I was ah. like, yeah, my relationship has taught me so much. <laughs> but, you know, I, <laughs> just rubbing it in their face to their newly single. But No, I like I, this. I like learning about, okay, oh, I have a question. So you talked for 10 months. Yeah. You FaceTime. We FaceTime. We Skyped. We did texting all that calls skype uh, sex do you think ooh yeah. do you how does that work uh you just prop the computer up and you know and then just like talk to each other through yeah it? kind is of is it hot is it good it was yeah and i do miss it sometimes like huh. when we travel sometimes like when we, well, we travel mostly together because him and i work together but when we travel apart we still try to do stuff like that mm -hmm. because you have to especially when you're in a long-term relationship keep it spicy yeah. but i will tell you what was awkward when the internet connection would drop <laughs> out you'd be like it got very awkward there you are alone in your room with a fucking <laughs> vibrator and your pussy going why is the wi-fi forsaking me it was so embarrassing embarrassing i'll never forget we got i was in vegas he was in australia because we did long distance for 10 months mm -hmm. i mean at 10 months three years before he moved over Whoa. three years so i got really good at all this so i got a <laughs> i was in vegas i was staying at my friend's house and i was like i'm gonna have a date night with nick we planned it mm -hmm. i got a room at the cosmopolitan hotel Ooh, really cute girl. room i had lingerie and i go to call him and the internet's not working this is in the cosmopolitan hotel mm -hmm. like this is like not an expensive it. Vegas yes, hotel that's yes. cute and gorgeous. I had IT come up. I had I'm in a nighty. Ah! I have all these people <laughs> coming trying to fix it. Nick's like being so supportive and nice. Mm -hmm. Three hours, still not working. So we just decided to call each other and be like, okay, I love you. I'm sorry. We'll try it again. I was Aww. devastated. So, you know, the internet, like, I need the connections to be strong, the Wi Fi to be strong. Very funny to be like, IT, you need to fix this. Or I can fuck. <laughs> I was so bummed. I know, exactly. <laughs> I, I was it. just eating MMs from the mini bar and being <laughs> so sad about life. Here's a question Do you think being long distance and not having met him for so long created a false sense of intimacy so that when you met him you kind of had to backtrack because you had gotten ahead of it no i but i i think like it helped me familiarize myself with him i don't know maybe it did i never thought of it that way i think the the part that i had a hard time with was um 
I don't know, maybe it did because I had a really hard time accepting that this person in front of me, like he's much better mm -hmm. looking in real life than online. And I, and so he was like so handsome and he smelled so good. I remember all this stuff when I first met him and I'm like, in my head because I had such low self-esteem. I was like, how is this guy into me? And mm -hmm. like, how does he want to be with me? And and so it took a, it took probably the first five weeks of his trip of us, like I was so mean to him. Really? And I was, oh, yeah, so I you was, were just like putting up a wall to be like, yeah. in case you hurt me on this trip, I'll hurt yes. you first. And I was working still, uh, I was still, I wasn't self-employed, so I wasn't modeling full time. Mm -hmm. So I was doing like makeup at Mac and I was also working in a dental office and I took on extra shifts at Mac so I wouldn't be home with him wow it was really mean and it wasn't until like a week before he left that it clicked with me and i was like wait this guy's leaving back to australia i don't know what's happening like obviously we were together but mm -hmm. like i mean it and so i didn't see him again after he left for another 10 months because Ooh. money we were both broke mm -hmm. but also i think it was just like I, I didn't really leave him wanting to run exactly all the way back here did he ever bring up that you seem distant or yes. mean and per oh yeah <laughs> like on, on like afterwards or um, during no during the trip he mentioned it but i think he was just like really sad and it's funny mm. because now if i even like make him mad or anything he'll like snap and let me know <laughs> real quick but then like i think like how did he like he hit it really well and he would tell me in really like soft ways but he was quite disappointed mm -hmm. at my behavior well it's very interesting to me to date someone for 10 months without seeing them and like hearing like because phone cadence is different than in-person cadence sure. and facetime all of that's different than like actually being there with the person and it feels like it was 10 months of time getting to know someone, but then you had to get to know them again. Yeah. Because people are different in person. I'm still doing it. I mean, uh, we spent three years dating and we've lived together. Next month will be three years that mm -hmm. he's lived in the U.S. But I mean, you're still like, I mean, I think we're still trying to figure it out and we're still like learning stuff about each other and like annoying the shit out of each other. That's relationships. <laughs> but, but, um, it's weird to to think back at a time where I felt unlovable and I felt like someone wouldn't love me because of my size because now I can't even fathom that. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want – I mean, if, if he – the only way that he's getting rid of me is if he dies. So if he, <laughs> if he dies tomorrow and let's say, like, however long down the track I start dating – I mean, I don't know. This is hypothetical. But I can't picture going back to that person I was and, like mm – -hmm. and, and, and like you, like my dating profile would be just as <laughs> as outspoken as that, saying like, I'm fat, deal with it. This is what I like. Yeah, you know? I uh when I first started online dating, my first profile was on OKCupid. I had a lot of face shots, a lot of like camera high, Same. chin down, hide the second chin. And then I never met up with anyone from OKCupid when I was on it in New York. But like, had I, people would have been like, whoa, 100%. you are truly misrepresenting yourself. Because <laughs> I was like 75 pounds smaller. So then my face was like, I have a pretty, I have a photogenic face. I look good in pictures. Same. And then if I like tilt down, like I, it's like, oh, that's a thin woman. That's that woman might be a little thick, but like she looks thin. And it's like, you can't, you got to show that whole body, yada, yada, yada. I need you though to update your Tinder profile to one of those wig photos you posted <laughs> because those were ever everything thank you if you don't follow me on social media which you should you can see my tinder profile on uh facebook it's nicole buyer comedy but uh on instagram i posted pictures of me in this fabulous purple wig that i got on hollywood boulevard that's made for a drag queen but i saw it and i was like that's me it's so good on that's you who i am thank you so much tess i have a question i know we don't know each other very well but if you were single would you date me I would date you. Ooh, what a treat. Very few people have said yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I like, I, I don't know. I feel like uh, life's too short and I don't know. Why not? Thank you. I very much appreciate it. <laughs> so what are you doing right now? You're modeling. 
I am. I'm actually going to Fashion Week for the first time. That's. Are you so walking? I'm not. I walked last year. I'm not walking this year. This year, uh, I'm going with Sebastian, the hair company. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm going to Christian Ciriano's show Ooh, fun, fun, to fun. interview him. Yeah, and then uh, I'm meeting up with a fan. Got a giveaway, so they're coming to do Ooh, that. That's nice. It's gonna be fun. So I'm attending like eight shows. I've Ooh. never done that. I'm doing like the full Fashion Week moment, but I think it's fun. It's like I'm in no way going to stop modeling but I um I really want to get into high fashion and mm-hmm. I think like you know you have Beth Ditto and you have more high profile fat girls that designers are mm-hmm. making stuff for but, but you they're don't making for them specifically for which sure. bugs me the fuck out yes like yeah. uh Mark Jacobs, I think, featured Beth Ditto yes. in a campaign. Yeah. But I was like, then make us fucking clothes. And Jean Paul Gaudier and Gucci. Had Crystal Ren walk. Yeah. And had her walk at the end, meaning that was like his inspiration. It's like, yeah. then make us the fucking clothes. I know. And it's so, it's so frustrating. So it's like, it's hard because on one hand, I don't, you know, if high, if high fashion's not making our size, then obviously I always tell people, put your money where your mouth is mm-hmm. and support brands that are making your size. But on the other side, I, I, you you know, they make accessories, they make other stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I think why not? Like why, you know, you have plus size models that are that are working for some big designers, but those plus size models are no bigger than a 12 or a 14. Mm-hmm. So where, what about us fat girls that have money? Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I want to spend it. I want to spend like, it and I, I want to be I love bags, but you can only have so many purses. Uh, I know. I had a designer today that I'm attending their show and they were like, you can pick four things from our site. And I mean, I was so excited, but when you're going through mm-hmm. it, it's like, I had to do a filter and say accessories yep. and like, you know, because I can't wear the stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's, so that part is frustrating. So yeah, I mean, I want to do more high fashion. I'm doing a couple other things that I can't talk about yet, but okay. I, um, I don't know. I think TV is fun. I want to see where that takes me. So mm-hmm. As like know. a personality or do you want to get into acting? Um, maybe not acting, probably just myself. I don't want to do I don't want to do anything uh scripted because okay. that's not me. Mm-hmm. Um but I would I don't know. I'm like I'm kind of like testing some stuff out, but I mean, I sorry for everyone. I guess they'll just have to see me more, I guess is what I'm <laughs> saying. But I don't know. I love how visible you are. I love that you you were on the cover of People magazine, which yeah. is like Great. And I just, I love that you exist and I love that you don't apologize for existing. Thank you. And I think you're a real trailblazer. And I'm so excited you came to talk to me. I'm so excited I got to see you. Yeah. Cause I like talking about fat things, but I haven't had anyone on who's like full fledged, like, fuck you. This is it. I don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Uh, so it was just like, I'm glad I got to be the first and pop your cherry. Yeah. 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 Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, I, um, I always ask people to subscribe to the podcast and rate it. And if you rate it and hit on me or say something nasty, I'll read it. So let's see what I got. Okay. M. Thomas Steele said, sweet podcast. This podcast is as sweet as them sweet, sweet titties on Nicole. And I want to bury my face all up in them. (laughs) Which I truly, truly love very, very, very much. Um, and then everyone truly is being very nice, which is great. Uh, someone said they want to sit on my face, which is good, I guess. Okay. But, like, I want to sit on your face. I was just about to say, like, I would much rather it be the other way. Right? Like, I don't, I don't want that. And then I had a good one. This man said he was sorry for his, uh, white male privilege and he wanted to give it to me. He wanted to give me his hard white male privilege. Oh. That made me giggle. Uh, yeah, so truly, keep them coming in. They make me smile. I really love when people are inappropriate and nasty, and I'm asking for it. (laughs) I'm glad you put that disclaimer on there. (laughs) And I'm asking for it in a way that women are not asking for it all the time. Unless they say they want it, they don't. So that's that's my, my little tidbit for everyone today. Okay, thank you for listening. Uh, bye! That was a HeadGum Podcast.